Alright, all fanboy shit aside, this is a video that I've really wanted to make for quite a while now. And with all the greatest of all time speak that goes around YouTube and all the opinions and all the flaming a lot of these uh, vloggers do to a lot of their fans and commenters, you know, I'm not going to do anything like that because basically what I say... Like what I, whatever I believe that goes into my videos and what everyone and every other opinion that people express, that's more than that's fine. But right now I'm gonna talk about who I believe is the greatest boxer of all time until the next greatest boxer of all time. Until whoever to this person I name passes the torch, this dude is the greatest boxer to ever grace the squared circle. And I'm pretty sure you already just by the title of the of the video, you already know who I'm speaking of, and that's Floyd Mayweather Jr. Okay, I'll break it down. I'll I'll go into character, I'll go into out of ring antics, then I'll go into legacy, then I'll go into boxing technique. First off, who is Floyd Mayweather? He's a five division world champion. Okay, he has won eight world titles and as well as a lineal championship in three different weight classes. He is a two time ring. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's a two-time Fighter of the Year winner for the ring, winning the award in '98 and 2007. He also won the Boxing Writers Association of America Fighter of the Year award in '07 and the Best Fighter SB award in '07 and '08, 2010 and 2012, and he's undefeated. All right. Sure, to a lot of people, especially a lot of detractors of Mayweather, an undefeated record doesn't mean anything. Okay, that's that's fair, but you also have to understand as well that Floyd Mayweather being undefeated is what makes him as a fighter. All right? The man has an illustrious career being undefeated. He he's a, even though he's a bronze medalist in in the 90s in, excuse me in the Olympics back in 96 at featherweight because obviously he won that match but they gave it to the other guy in a, in a controversial manner, the same way they did Roy Jones. The dude has boxing in his blood. It is sewn into the very fabric of his existence. He was brought up wearing gloves. You know, he wore leather on his fist coming out of the womb. You know, despite what happened in his family, despite his background, his father, his uncles show or shown him excuse me showed him how how you're supposed to fight the Mayweather name is powerful and for those who say that Mayweather has no legacy you're full of shit the Mayweather name itself has legacy both his his father and his uncles were champions you know they weren't great you know they weren't like uh, Tommy Hearns but they were champions at the end of the day and you have to respect that Floyd Mayweather is beyond anything boxing has ever seen. He's beyond Ray Robinson. He is beyond Muhammad Ali. He is beyond Mike Tyson. He may be the most hated boxer now, but you cannot deny that his skill isn't some of the most beautiful it's, not, it's, it's, it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Like, who else fights like that? Like, every time I view a Mayweather bout, you are seeing history being made. You know, just like back at the time when Ray Robinson used to fight, back when Muhammad used to fight, guys like Jake LaMotta, Rock, Rocky Marciano. You, there was a feeling in you that you were like, this guy is amazing. This guy has something that people are going to remember. And people will remember Floyd Mayweather, despite his resume. You know, you can call his resume bad, moderate, you know, awesome. It doesn't matter. They're going to remember Floyd Mayweather because he will be in the Boxing Hall of Fame, obviously, as one of the greatest boxers, if not the greatest boxer to ever fight. The, the type of how he captivates the fans, good and bad, whether you love him or hate him, he has the persona that he lets out, that he exerts to everyone to whether it's like you can either you either can ride with him or you can just throw him aside and dislike him. 
any way you look at it, the man is going to get paid off of the fans, off of the viewers, because people want to see him lose. Of all the people who said, oh, I don't want to watch Floyd Mayweather fight unless it can get lessons against Manny Pacquiao. But yet, 1.4 million people bought the Mosley fight, and I believe the same amount of people bought the Cotto fight, if I'm not mistaken. It's neither way. He there's over a million views for both fights. People wanted to see it because they were interested in seeing how well Mayweather either did he did he did he drop off the face of the earth? Is he getting weaker? Is he getting stronger? You know, or you know, is he getting better? You know, he's almost forty, damn near forty, and people are still interested in seeing how this guy is managing to just you know go in there. And still make magic happen. The dude's style of boxing is beautiful, and you will never see it again. After this, after Floyd Mayweather Jr. leaves, there will be no one else in boxing that will possess the ring IQ, the technique, the skill, the athleticism, the know-how, the strategic mannerisms that he has in the boxing business. No one out there will ever be able to match that. Nobody. Kind of like Michael Jordan. There will never be another Michael Jordan. The closest we have is LeBron James. And even then, I believe LeBron James is on the route of being better than Michael Jordan. But that's a different that's a different topic for a different day. I'm sure a lot of you are going to hate me for that. If you don't hate, already hate me. Um, amateur career in the Olympics. 84 and 6. Okay. In comparison to a lot of other guys who've had 200, 300 amateur wins... He was he still went to the Olympics and made something of himself. He turned himself into Money Mayweather, or the predecessor name, uh, Pretty Boy Floyd, which I still consider him. I still consider him Pretty Boy Floyd. I don't like the whole Money Mayweather persona he puts out. Pretty lame. But um, let's look at his accomplishments in the ring. Okay. Let's look at the name, starting from his 43rd fight, Miguel Cotto. He won the WBA Super Middleweight and the WBC Diamond Lightweight Middleweight titles. I mean, excuse me, Light Middleweight titles. Victor Ortiz. He won a WBC Welterweight title. Okay? Victor Ortiz now. Now, that dude, he may be insane, but he still gave Mayweather a damn good fight. And I still think he would give Mayweather a damn good fight if he didn't go all Balrog on him. Shane Mosley. All right. In the Shane Mosley bout. Everyone said, oh, Shane Mosley was old. Oh, Shane Mosley was washed up. Look, Shane Mosley was still in a position to make a good fight for Floyd. He just couldn't do it because he was getting his ass handed to him by Floyd. The second round, the right hand that he threw on Mayweather gave him stanky leg, okay? And I, trust me, I was nervous as hell the entire fight after that, after that situation. And Mayweather fought out of it beautifully. He, he rose from the ashes like a phoenix and tore... Mosley's ass up, you know. Personally, I've always seen Mosley as the type of guy where his lower body never really worked in tandem with his upper body. If you know what I'm talking about, where he had a good thing going up top, but his bot, but his bottom portion of his of his physique just didn't work right. You know, there was really nothing. There's no fluidity there. You know, when you see a guy fight, everything works from top to bottom. Something below the waist just just wasn't working out. One man, Will Marquez. Okay, I want everybody. To look for a video that has Burt Sugar talking about Floyd Mayweather Jr. fighting Marquez. Burt Sugar spoke so highly of Marquez going into the Mayweather fight because Burt Sugar believed that Juan Manuel Marquez beat Pacquiao in the second fight. And he believed that Marquez had Pacquiao's number to where no matter how many times Pacquiao fought I mean, excuse me, Marquez fought Pacquiao, Pacquiao would win. He pretty much gave it like a 9 to 10 ratio that Marquez would beat Pacquiao. And so far, our, the, that ratio was working. He pretty much said that he compared Ray Leonard's comeback against Virgil Hill and Hector Camacho to the fight with Marquez. He believed that Marquez was going to get in Mayweather's ass and knock him out. Oh, Mayweather's too old. Mayweather had an 18 or almost two year layoff. He was on. He, he's fighting a guy. He's very. He's underestimating. In at a lower weight. Then after Mayweather went in there and just systematically tore Marquez's ass and gave him pretty much tore him a new asshole. That's when the whole 
backsliding started to happen. Bert Shear talking about, oh, well, Mayweather fought a lightweight, and he showed why he was the lightweight in the ring tonight. Okay, what happened to all the, all the, you know, the, what's the word I'm looking for? He was so pumped up and so hyped behind Marquez beating Mayweather that once Mayweather made him look like he never fought a day in his life, that's when he wanted to start talking the bullshit. That's when all the garbage started to come out of Burt Sugar's mouth. And it was kind of, it was just really funny to see Burt Sugar, you know, backpedal like he did. You know, that really shows you the type of person Burt Sugar is. I mean, I don't I don't take anything away from Burt Sugar. I think there's a time and place for Burt Sugar, and I think that was when boxing was still in its like in the whole black and white stages. I believe if you were to tell Burt Sugar who his top ten favorite boxers were, I guarantee you all ten of them would be Jack Dempsey. Maybe Jake LaMotta, I don't know. But I don't I believe that he just didn't he didn't like Mayweather because I believe he he just I just don't think he he had an affinity for black fighters in general. You know, he he's one of those old school type of guys. I just don't think he he was there, you know. He wasn't there. He wasn't on the whole wavelength of black fighters taking over the sport. He's he's still in that whole Jack Dempsey, Marciano era. And I really don't listen to what he had to say too much anyway. Okay, Ricky Hatton. All right, a lot of people say that this fight should have happened at 147. I'm excuse me, 140 pounds. Okay, Floyd had a chance to fight Ricky Hatton at 140 pounds after the Gotti fight. Both Hatton and Cotto were were in the audience that evening. After they seen what Mayweather did to Gotti, nor Cotto nor Hatton won any part won any part of it. And there's also there was an article circulating around that same time Mayweather beat Gotti that Ricky Hatton called his father and asked him what did he think of the Mayweather fight. And Ricky Hatton's father said that he didn't want him in the ring with Mayweather at all and this still went on to this day up until the time when when Mayweather fought Hatton at 147 Mayweather uh, Hatton's father was still against the fight so was his mother and then we all know what happened check left hook knockout now Carl okay also the Oscar De La Hoya fight now this fight personally I like this fight you know everyone's seen this fight what was it like 2.4 million buys or something like that this fight was the definition of super fight you know, De La Hoya had, was going into this fight the same way he went into the Pacquiao fight, talking crap, believing he was in the best shape of his life, pretty much throwing the wool over the eyes of the fans just to get a payday. And once he got his ass knocked, what taken out in like the, what, the eighth or ninth round by Pacquiao, then all then everyone just pretty much said like, oh, Manny Pacquiao's a new and improved. You know, he's the next De La Hoya. I believe De La Hoya. Went into the ring of Manny Pacquiao believing that he was going to lose, but he did it just so he can make Pacquiao who he is. He's responsible for it, too, so I guess you can say he is, you know, he would be the genesis of Manny Pacquiao's comeuppance in the sport. Carlos Baldemir. I remember an interview Brian Kinney when he used to work with ESPN. He interviewed Floyd Mayweather, and Floyd Mayweather kept alluding to, oh, I'm the best, I'm the best fighter in the world, I'm the best fighter in the world, Brian Kenny brought out, he had the nerve to say, well, you're not the best, Carlos Baldemir is the best, he has the belt, and you're not the best until you beat Carlos Baldemir, we all know the shit Brian Kenny used to spew when it came to Mayweather, he didn't like him, okay, that was more, that's fine, Mayweather was, it was, was fine with proving all the naysayers incorrect, which he's constantly done through his illustrious career, then then you say, oh, why didn't Mayweather fight Margarito? Why didn't Mayweather fight, you know, yada, yada, yada? Listen, Mayweather, when he was under top rank at the time, there was a deal that he made with Bob Arum. He wanted Cotto, Margarito, and De La Hoya, okay, in a three-fight deal. And I, I don't know how much money he was supposed I think he wanted, like, $10 million per fight or something like that. But... All Bob Aaron was willing to give Mayweather was $8 million against Margarito. And I don't even think a title was on the line. Maybe Mayweather's. I'm not too sure. But all I do know is that once Mayweather, or once Al Heyman negotiated Mayweather's departure from top rank, and he paid him his measly, uh, what is it, I think it's $750,000 that he had left on, that he had on his contract that it was worth, he went on to make $8 million against Carlos Baldemir, a lesser opponent, but still an opponent, no matter how you look at it, and fought for a world title. You know, a legitimate title. He fought for the I. He he fought for the IBO. Well, he retained the IBO that he got off of 
I think he got that off of Judah. I think he got the IBO and the IBF titles off of Judah. And he retained them, retained the IBO, won the WB, then he won the WBC, won the IBA, and won the ring welterweight title off of Baldemir. I think I'm correct on that. You know, stuff like that. You know, you can't, that, that, to me, that's the perfect strategy for boxing. He pretty much evaded bullshit, because he knew he how much, Floyd knew how much he was worth. You know what I'm saying? For a guy who jumped ship, fought Sean Bay, fought Zab, fought Carlos, fought De La Hoya, and made as much money as he did, that to me is, that breeds perfection. That is probably the most biggest turnaround in sports history in terms of out-of-ring association in the business. You know what I mean? That is that is ridiculous. You know, I don't think, other than De La Hoya... No, I don't think anyone else could have done that as perfect as Mayweather could have. You know, that was just unbelievable. I give him all the credit in the world for that. Um, Zab Judah. All right. Zab Judah was the undisputed welterweight champion going into the fight with Baldemir until he pretty much lost everything. He pretty much got his ass handed to him. He gave Mayweather a damn good fight. The first three or four rounds were Zab Judah rounds until Mayweather turned it around, put his foot on the gas, you know, whatever, going into another gear, and just blew Zab Judah out of the ring. Using bigger gloves at that. I mean, those, you see those gloves that he used? Those gloves were huge. Those big old white pillowy gloves he had on? Those gloves were massive. But he still, he still did the job, despite the bull. And then, um, in terms of legacy, there's a lot of fighters that people really don't like and have, especially the Castillo fight, how they thought, like, oh, he lost that fight. Listen, I watched that fight over a dozen times, and I still score the fight 7-5 for Floyd. So, whatever, regardless of what you, with the bias you have, you know, around Mayweather, surrounding Mayweather, that's just, that's, that's just how I, that's how I saw it, that's how I scored it, that's how I'm going to believe it. You know, say what you want, it doesn't matter. Now, looking at his resume... Who are some of the guys that you believe that really they don't give Mayweather the type of the the the, the power to be the greatest of all time? Because when you say when you think of greatest, you automatically think of resume. You don't really think of everything surrounding him. You know, they always try to say that you know his personal life, this and that, don't, will pretty much count against him in terms of being the greatest. Hell, you have a lot. You have guys like Roy Robinson, guys like Leonard. You know, family issues, beating their wives. You know, there's all kinds of boxers that beat the shit out of their wives at some point in time, or are alcoholics, or had a, had a bunch of kids and didn't take care of them. I don't see people really talking about that. You know, same thing with Muhammad Ali. The whole draft ducking BS that they, that the fiasco that went on. No one's holding that against him. I guess it's only stuff like that only works against you if you're disliked but if you're if you're one of the most liked boxers in history then people tend to forget about stuff like that there's always a bias but let's look at Floyd's resume okay Gennaro Hernandez Mayweather won the lineal and WBC for, uh, super featherweight titles off Gennaro Hernandez that was a damn good fight even though a lot of people didn't really think Floyd had a chance against Gennaro Gennaro he went in there and whooped Gennaro's ass I think that's where Floyd's stock started to slowly rise a bit when people when they saw the Hernandez fight Angel Man Freddy. Anyways, um, guys like Gregorio Vargas, Diego Corrales was a good fight. I like Diego personally. You know, we come from the same hometown. I respect the man fully. Rest in peace. Such and such. Um, Jesus Chavez. All right. Now this fight, right here, I thought was. It was pretty cool, you know what I mean. I thought it was pretty cool. I didn't, I, I didn't really have any have any gripes in this fight, you know. Floyd went in there and did what he had to do, you know. He, I guess he, he wasn't necessarily a, he was he was tough to a degree. He was like one of those mediocre, tough Hispanic boxers, but he went in there and did what he had to do. Then he fought Castillo. Okay, Castillo pretty much pushed Floyd around. For, for an entire 12 round fight he pretty much wrestled him and clubbed him across the head like he was a caveman Floyd had a torn rotator cup he couldn't really do what he wanted to do but when, but then the second fight the sequel 
Floyd really put it on Castillo and, and proved to you that Castillo wasn't on Floyd's level, which he wasn't. That, pr- that, that, that pretty much removes any and all doubt from the first fight. That takes it all, all away. Philip Endo, Demarcus Chop Chop Corley, Henry Brucellis, Arturo Gardi, Sean Bay. I already went through all that. Okay, this right here. 43 wins, 26 knockouts, 17 decisions, 0 losses, 0 draws. Alright? All of this... That is that I've I've, I've actually that I've uh, spoken of is pro- it, it's the makeup of greatness. You know what I'm saying? There's not too many other boxers in in that whole, in, in in Floyd's category that can compare to this that he hasn't already beaten. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not talking about past era boxers. You know, I'm I'm tired of the whole past versus current era don't even compare it two different styles of boxing is two different sides of a coin apples and oranges you know what i mean I, like i said in my, my sugar ray robinson versus floyd mayweather video there's a lot of past uh welterweights that floyd would have just embarrassed in the ring you know i can't recall their names but he would have embarrassed a lot of them you know and i believe duran would have been one of them and i think ray leonard would have been one of them also Ray Leonard and Duran possessed a lot. You know, they had a lot of skill, but they just didn't have Floyd's skill. You know, and you can go back and reference Tommy Hearns. You can go back and reference all this resume and all this crap. But trust me, none of these guys have what Floyd has. They don't have the skill Floyd does. Not not even a quarter of it. You know, it's, it, they, wouldn't even, they, they, they weren't even able to possess the type of funding that Mayweather is able to do. They didn't have a character. All they were were just faces on a screen that people flocked to. They didn't speak. They hardly said anything. Because obviously, if, they, if that was the case, if they were so popular, a la uh, Muhammad Ali, they would have actually made a character for themselves to where they would have put themselves on the screen and they would have been more financially reliable, more financially stable than they are now. Because if you think about it, where was Joe Frazier at when he, when he was all said and done? The dude was almost broke. If he, I think he was broke. Joe Lewis, same way, broke. Mike Tyson, broke. You know, despite him being in the hangover and whatnot, he was still broke. You know, guys like Miguel Cotto, Shane Mosley, Marquez Hatton, you know, De La Hoya, you know, Baldemir Gotti, those guys, you know, rest in peace, Arturo Gotti, they still would have had money leaving the fight game. When Gotti left boxing, he still had money. You know, he was still smart. That's what a lot of people don't understand about boxing. They think it's all about fighting the number one guy. Or not, well, number one guy should fight the number two guy. But they all believe that fighting and getting in big bloody bouts is what boxing is all about. It's not about that anymore. It's about strategy. It's about taking fights that you know have the biggest turnout. But at the same time, you're not going to kill yourself in the ring over. Because why are you going to kill yourself in the ring over peanuts? Let guys in mixed martial arts do that. You know, let guys in MMA fight for two hundred dollars and, and get big old lacerations on their head from from elbows and getting their arms snapped, and they don't even have any insurance. You know, let the animals do that. When you're smart in boxing, you control what you want to control, and Mayweather has control over each and every bout. And there's no reason why people should be disrespecting Mayweather for that. You know, there, I'm sure there's a lot of boxers in the past that wish they had the power Mayweather had. You know, Ray Leonard is probably the only guy that probably had. A quarter of what of, of, of the, the, the say so in his bouts that Mayweather did. But they will never be Mayweather. You know, and Mayweather will never be them. And I think that's a good thing. But anyways, I want to hear what you guys have to say about Mayweather. You know, negative, positive, like it, dislike my video, comment, say whatever you want. I'm sure I'll be calm. I'll be replying to a lot of comments as well. But until then I'm out of here. Peace.